Hi, welcome to Shelf Starters. I'm Rosie and this okay. is Kate. Hi everyone. Um, today we are starting with John Skelton, yes. um, who was a poet from the 16th century. He's our first one to be started in the 16th century section of the Norton. Um, and do you want to tell us a bit about John Skelton? So a Latin tutor for Prince Henry, oh, well, the prince who became Prince Henry VIII. So Skelton was the Latin tutor. Um, and he's known apparently for his, um, well, he is known for the rhyme, obviously, but he's also known for being really, really satirical. So mm -hmm. a political sort of a man and um, very, very biting and satirical and kind of bawdy often at yeah. the same time. Have to yeah, say, he, not hugely to my taste, Rosie, but. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I felt similarly. I thought it was okay. Um, and I, like, I read all of these, which is a lot. Um, and there's a lot of poetry that is, like you said, it's a satire. It's a lot of commentary on um, on the, like. What's going the, on in the court. The situation of the time in court, yeah. But yeah. more more focused on how, like, two-faced everyone is, basically. Like, yeah. he, he really talked yeah. about, um yeah, how everyone has like these two kind of sides to them that they're always hiding something. That kind of like seedy kind of undertone of the court was what he used to like. So it's interesting of. that when when a person writes about that two two facedness of others, they don't come out well themselves very often. Yeah, I think that's the thing. And he, there's a period where he so you know not everything is known about his life and everything, of course. Um, but there was a period when he was not at court. And um, I, I think we don't know exactly why, but like if he was made to leave or if he chose to leave because he hated it so much. But he did leave the court at some point and then he came back later on. He had made some like very big attacks on Cardinal Wolsey yeah. at the time. Yes. Um, that, yeah, you can definitely read about here. And that's very like that I enjoyed because you can kind of see the historical context there. Um, but then I think it says here that Wolsey had him imprisoned but then released him and then hired his services for himself. So he recognized that he was very talented and that it was better to have him on side. Yeah. Keep your, <laughs> keep your enemies close. A lot of back and forth. <laughs> keep, keep those yeah. enemies very close. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of back and forth. Um, so yeah, I think he was uh, considered a very, very talented poet at the time. He was a poet yeah. laureate from Oxford and Cambridge. And, um, and he had, like you said, the rhyme. So this famous rhyme is called Skeltonics. Yeah. And it's basically when you just keep rhyming oh. the end of each line as many times as you can and you run out of a rhyme. The Norton intro, it says, like a, a, an original rap artist. Yeah. I find like, that kind of sound, that rhyme, constant rhyming, not, I, I don't, I think that it is, I know it's designed to bombard you. And yes. It, and it does, but it also, it kind of numbs you, I think. Yeah, it feels a bit um, immature in a sense to me yes, because like it's sort of like, I mean, for rhyme's sake yeah. rather than actually having something necessarily great to say. Yep. And it's got, um, they describe it as like a helter skelter kind of rhyme. So it is very like that whole like clattering kind of like tumbling rhyme where it kind of feels like it's all just blah, 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 <laughs> coming yeah, off. It's like verbal diarrhea. Yeah. 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 So it's a very like fast pace. Yes. which I guess is fun. But, and um, that's what you need to do when you read it. It has to be said that you need to remember that. And when you're reading it, you need to actually almost actually do read it out loud and go much faster than you normally would. Because if you go slowly, yeah. you lose sense of the rhyme as well. Yeah. And, and then it really doesn't work. So you, you need to go quite quickly. So let's get it stuck into one, shall we? Yes, we've got three. Um, and I did like do some nice little annotations and stuff so I could remind myself of what actually happens in these poems well, and it was not one much of Rosie is the thing not a lot happens in each they're quite they're not quite long. subtle um in some ways so for example okay so let's start with Manly Marjorie Milk and Ale okay um which I did have to I found it actually very much like I needed to annotate it to make sure I did understand yep. because yes not much happened but in the sense that so much, so little happens, you can almost miss yes. the actual point. Yes. Um, so I had to like really pay attention to it. Yes. So this is, um, firstly, there are three different people speaking here. Okay, yeah. Important. Um, so we've got one, one man who yep. is um, a clerk, I believe. Yeah, Yes. a clerk. 
um, who is seducing a woman. Yes. Who is Marjorie. Marjorie, <laughs> yep. And then there's a chorus voice as well. So you kind of have to work out which parts are being spoken by who in the form to begin yeah. with. Um, yes, because and it's every stanza different. actually ends with the same two lines, doesn't it? Yes, it has um, Gup Christian Clout, Gup Jack of the Vale with Madeline Marjorie Milk and Ale. Yep. Um, and that, the Gup yep. thing, is um, is like a horse movement, like yep. a like. ear horse thing. Yep. 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 Yes, like that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so because I, th- I think I'm getting the picture that Marjorie was on a little carriage, maybe was like selling some some produce or something with a horse. And then this guy comes along and he's trying to like seduce her, basically. And so she's very much a commoner. Um, and he is it seems like he might be related to the clergy somehow. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he basically he calls her a pretty poad, which I yeah, believe which is, is a toad, a, isn't it? A toad. Yeah, a toad. Nice. So, I mean, that'd yeah, get you. That'd exactly really get classic. you, wouldn't it? That's a way to woo. Yeah, me. definitely. <laughs> yeah, come here, my pretty um, toad. Excellent. And yeah, he he does. She doesn't really fall for him. She says, "Ye play the foad, which is a deceiver or flatterer." Yep. Um. And then there's a lot of sexual imagery. Yeah, I'm. I'm no horse for you to ride. Yes, not subtle. Yeah, but, not subtle. No, no, no. Yeah. Um. She. He's also calling her a pig's knee which is a pig's eye nice so yeah he's really just not not really not really striking part with no. the fluttering terminology here no, no. um she says no 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 i will not um i will not be jabed bodily i will yeah. not be treat, tricked bodily so yeah. it seems like at this point he's physically coming close to her yes um then there's this sort of silent bit that i think you could miss if you are not reading it closely where in between these two last stanzas here it seems like he has raped her possibly that yeah. was my reading so she said like in that you, you second to last stanza he's come, walk forth yeah. your way you co- ye cost me naught now have i found that i have sought the best yeah, so it seems like got what you wanted. ever i brought it's horrible mm-hmm. yeah it's not nice and you didn't really see it happen on stage really like it's that that paragraph before the stanza before you can see he's coming towards her because it's got, yeah. she's saying, no, no, go away. I won't go be away. Don't come yeah. me physically. But then you don't, you just get that. that it's even a big gap. Yeah. And yeah, we just jump forward. Yeah. And basically, yeah, we have to assume, I suppose, that that's what happened. Yeah. And then yet the tone is still very light and. Yeah, like it was like, nothing. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's a bit jarring. <laughs> I thought. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was an interesting one because I'm not really sure what he was trying to say at the end of the day, because he's those rhymes that he has makes it seem very light. And yes. there was a lot of humor in, you know, what the, um, the way he's trying to seduce her with these like, you know, toad and pig's eye and things like that. Like you, are you supposed to laugh? But then it's like this no, horrible thing. Happened. But then also Rosie, that very last stanza, the ending, um, your breath is stale. Mm-hmm. so there's a change to the last two lines yeah that like um repeated couplet yep yep it's kind of it's not nice is it it's a turning um, point yeah so but the part the it's the only m- way that you can tell exactly who's doing the speaking or singing is because there are um quotation marks yes and i wonder if that was added in yeah in the quite Norton- in- yeah, yeah, because I think it was in this one um, that I also had. So I think in some, like it is quite hard, hard to tell who's speaking when if you don't have that in. Yeah, um, and even, like there's only the um, the quotation marks when it's the yeah. man speaking. But even yeah. even between man um, between manly Marjorie well, between Marjorie and, and um, Horus, you don't get any. Yes, yeah, there's no differentiation. So. And it's it is it's really short, really. Yeah. You know, it's a tiny, it's tiny, and yeah, you have to guess bits. So I kind of guess you wonder what the whole purpose is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's so that's that's the first one, and I think you'll see a common thread through this that women are not treated very well by Skelton. No. So that's what that's what I kind of get out of the whole thing. So the next one is um with lale lale like a child yeah. so 
kind of a um, false lullaby. Like he, you sort of go into it thinking it's going to be like a lullaby and then it's not not quite as calming and <laughs> everything as that would suggest. So it starts off with um, it being about sleep. So saying that sleep is too long. So there's someone who is um, who is sleeping currently. Yeah. Um, and this is, there's a bit of a warning here. You're sleeping too long. Yes. You're being deceived. Um, let me lie on your lap, lie still. So there's a man and a woman. The man is sleeping. The woman is trying to keep him sleeping. So yeah. there's a bit of a why is this happening? Like why is she trying to sort of bewitch him to sleep further? There's, there's a kind of magic feeling to it. Do you yeah. get that as well? Yes. Like, like a sorceress yeah. or something? It reminded me a bit of La Belle Dame, Song Mercy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That kind of, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, and then um, I also noticed there's a lot of uh, consonant clusters here, which yeah. I just have to say because I do love, love my <laughs> consonant clusters. Side note, they're really helpful. If you know the ones that are valid in English, they're very helpful for Wordle, if anyone's into Wordle. Oh, it's good, good to know your consonant good. clusters. Yep. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so I've got drowsy, dreaming, drowned in sleep. So that DR sound, which to me has a bit of a, um, like a like sleep. Like a drug. It's like a drug. Like a drug. Yeah, it, it, but it's that droning thing that kind of is a bit like snoring. Oh, yeah, you know, that sound that's like yeah. brr, brr, like it kind of yeah. feels like a yeah. humming, yeah, kind of thing. Um, yeah, and anyway, so that she kisses him, she's like making him go to sleep, and then he says that he wished never where he was, he had forgotten all deadly sins, so he becomes enchanted. Yes, at the at that point, um. He trusted her payment and lost all his prey. She left him sleeping and stole away. So she leaves him. And so the idea is that he's being tricked while he's sleeping. So he's not noticing what she's up to. So she goes off. And what does she do? <laughs> what do we reckon she's going to do? <laughs> Obviously. She meets her lover. She trusted her payment and lost all his prey. She left him sleep, sleeping and stole away. Mm-hmm. So we I like the refrain of "Thou sleepest too long, thou art beguiled." Yep. Um, but yeah. Anyway, then you get more. So I'm very interested in these um, alliterations. So you, get, <laughs> you get so you don't get the consonant clusters now, but now you get some um, glides. So you get L's, R's, and W's, um, which also have that kind of like uh, droning kind of smooth feel to them as well. That I guess is appropriate for a lullaby. Um, even and the, the last standard. <laughs> um, so rivers, roweth, waters, one. Um, that's all very glide like. Um, and then, yeah, she she goes over a, a river. She meets a man. Yes. Who embraces her heartily and kisses her sweet. Thus, after her cold, she caught a heat. I like that. Yeah. That's so funny. after being cold in the water, she gets got warm yeah. with her lover. Yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, and then, yeah, it just goes on to, you know, obviously she's having an affair with this man and her husband has no idea because he's sleeping through it. And it's instead wrong. of it being a criticism on her, which it kind of is, like it is it is not a good light that she's painted in, yeah. it goes back to the um, the guy dreaming and says and accuses him of being drunk. Yeah, Dr- drunk and drowsy, drunk and drowsy page, like that um, the ball bit on your head. How is that what that is? Yeah. That's that paint is the top of your head, the baldy part. So and then it calls him a blinker. My lust lobo. and liking is from the gone. Mm-hmm. So like all your pleasure and joy. Yeah, my blink, gone. My blinkered blow ball. <laughs> That's good. Which I love. Yep, you blinkered blow guard as well. Blinkered blow ball. Thou wakes wake is t- too late. Mm-hmm. And then she then she piles it on behold thou liest luggard alone yeah well may thou sigh well may thou groan to deal with her so cowardly <laughs> yeah so basically she's, she's so it is a weird um i guess it's a an opinion of the time or whatever because it's it's like the man's fault that he hasn't kept his woman in line enough to yep. notice that she's having an affair so it's yep. like it's all put back on him yeah um but it's just accepted that she's a terrible person yeah but somehow the blame is actually still with the man yeah so that's yeah that's your, yes I actually quite liked this one because it was well, kind I think of that's much better than the one before that's for sure the one before was brutal that's yeah. the thing and, and yeah. this one was a little bit more like it had that mocking kind of humor 
at yeah. the end there but in in general in a much softer kind of way it felt like yeah so I liked it more yeah um and also it just being written a bit more like lullaby as well so it had that like kind yeah. of softness yeah. in the yeah. bit more lyrical um yeah. a bit less of the skeletonic stuff as well it wasn't really a good example of, of skeletonics so <laughs> which turns out we're not a huge fan of um and then the last one which is the most famous one and this is the real example of skeletonics where it's yes. really short line yes. lots of rhyme and it's a lot of humor and a lot of chaos yeah <laughs> we're, we're in a pub aren't we mm -hmm. so it, it's replicating that pub vibe yeah of like and a lot about, of it's about the woman who owns the pub is that right yeah she's um yeah she's the like pub landlady person who and she's a real owns. life one apparently Yes, so he, and you have to, like, this poor woman. <laughs> I'm not sure how she feels about being presented in this way. Um, but it's basically a story about her running this um, this place where everyone goes to have their, their beer or whatever. And it talks about how dirty the pub is so that she literally has hens above the, um, the ale that will poo into the ale. Yeah. And, and sometimes she can't be bothered to be that. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes she says actually it tastes better this way and everyone will be fine yeah. um and then on top of that which is the worst part for sure occasionally there's these other animals that might come into the pub like you might also get a yeah. pig or a boar yeah. that will just wander in yeah. <laughs> have a drink or there is a stench gather up thou wench sees thou not what is full take up dirt and all and bear out of the hall god give it ill preving cleanly as ill as evil chipping yeah oh, um it does sound what I funny about this is it's so it's like yeah it's loud it's distracting there's a lot going on yeah even to the point that the narrator of the poem gets distracted and has to be like hang on back to my well, point wait yeah so th at this part here in line wait, 25 26 27 28 um it says, but let us turn plain, there we left again. So it goes off in like the whole yeah. tangent about the yeah. hogs and the people, like you get dialogue from people actually in the pub and everything. And then it's yeah. like, hang on, back to where we were. Yeah, come back. <laughs> so it's a very um, chaotic poem, I would say, in general. Um, then, oh yeah, then she's saying, so <laughs> that, you know, we've got her, her ale that is unhygienic to say the least, Horrible. but she claims it has mystic powers. <laughs> she says um that she learned it of a jew yeah when i began brew and i have found it true drink now while it is new and you may brook it will make you look younger than you be two years or three before you may prove it by me so she says i look great uh, look i drink me. this all the time yeah. look yeah. at it. I, my husband loves it <laughs> she said my husband say when we kiss and play in lust and in liking he call calleth me his whiting so my husband likes to look at me and it's because i drink this beer you drink it too and the same thing will happen <laughs> yeah yeah that's yeah basically it and she sounds pretty funny magic um, yeah and then oh and then the romance here sweetly together we lie as two pigs in a sty <laughs> <laughs> not peas in a pod no. pigs in a sty. Pigs in a sty. um yeah i i mean i think we've like the main thing to get away from this is really just that it was right. fun it's like a fun um chaotic rhyme you can yeah. really get the vibe of the pub like it i don't think it's saying anything particularly important it's just a reflection oh, of no. everyday life no this yeah. pub yeah and you get some some sort of real people rather than the court which i think in other poems skeleton was focusing a lot on so this is probably kind a of a more down a reprieve yeah. and yeah some fun for him obviously some fun yeah. yeah and then yeah again we have the narrator being distracted at the end he says but we'll turn playing where we left again so he just keeps going like it's like he goes round around and yeah. oh, back again and it's just like yeah all these different little points so um I thought it was fun but yeah I think overall not my favorite poet but I I didn't mind reading them and I do think I read all of them all the English poems because I think he did yeah, also right. do some action and stuff um and I do think the Norton chose some of the best ones the only other one that I think um was interesting was maybe Philip Sparrow and um that's also quite a famous one and what was the other one there was one about a parrot Philip Sparrow and Speak Parrot and the Speak Parrot one I believe is the one that um from memory is the one about Wolsey I believe mm. like 
sort of like a very thinly veiled comment yeah, on very people. Thinly veiled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, a lot of these are like not not that fun to read. So I think the Norton chose some good ones. Yeah. Well, uh, it was to just give us a taste, I suppose, which it did. So yeah. that we got we really got the gist of it's the, all about the rhyme. And we got that. Mm -hmm. That worked, and it, there were only three in here, so it wasn't painful. There were only three. They were all quite different, yeah. um, but all not particularly complimentary of women. No, none of them were. <laughs> so there's that. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, a good start to our poetry of the 16th century. Yeah. Um, next week we get a bit more of a serious turn. Extremely with, serious. Thomas More. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Utop um, Thomas More, very interesting character. Utopia, very deep book. <laughs> yeah, yep. A lot of philosophy. Absolutely. Yeah. But that'll, that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'll be, it will be good. And, you know, on which much has been based since. So that mm -hmm. the be. whole concept of dystopian fiction. Absolutely. Comes from this man. Comes from this. Yeah, so it, it is a big deal. I'm glad that we're getting to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a bit of a shift from the, from the poetry next week. Mm. All right. Um, well, let us know if you have read any Skelton before or if you're interested to do so after hearing about this. Um, yeah, we would love to hear how you're going and see you again next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.